Wet hold coffee is also sometimes called semi-washed, Sumatra process, or giling basa, and is a particular type of post-harvest processing that's almost exclusively done in Indonesia. This process is primarily done in climates with very high humidity and is a specific technique that's used to dry the coffee in damp and cloudy conditions. While the individual steps, method, and equipment vary from place to place, in this video we'll explore the wet hold process by following coffee that's processed at the Bergendal Mill in the Gayo Highlands of Aceh, Sumatra. Bergendal Mill is both an estate with its own farm as well as a processing point for other local farmers who tender their coffee to the mill to be processed for sale. Here we see two mill employees depulp a sack of coffee that's been sold in its cherry form. Just as in the washed or honey process, the depulping happens as soon as possible. Then the seeds in their mucilage are placed in a fermentation tank overnight. This is a bit unusual to the way a lot of coffee in Indonesia is processed, as there's more control over the steps in the process from start to finish at Bergendal Mill. In many other places, producers will depulp the coffee on their own individual farms, place the sticky seeds in sacks, and bring them to the market to be sold. Then they're brought to a mill to be wet hold. Before the parchment can be removed in the wet hold process, it needs to be given a quick pre-dry. It's raked into a thin layer and left to dry from anywhere from a few hours to a full day. The time depends on the humidity and the cloud cover overhead, which are the climate conditions that make it hard to dry coffee here without wet hulling the seeds. The coffee ideally reaches something close to 30 to 35% moisture before it is wet hulled. Once the coffee's reached that semi-dry state, it's transferred again, this time to be wet hulled. Wet hulling means the seeds parchment layer will be removed before the seeds are fully dry. In other processes, the parchment layer is left on the seeds until the coffee is ready for export. The wet hull machine works kind of like a depulper does, though it's calibrated to remove the parchment layer from the seeds rather than the outer fruit. The wet hulling machine shown in this video is one of the original pieces of wet hull equipment installed in Sumatra in the 1970s. The belts are powered by an old Mitsubishi car engine. In other coffee growing regions, the parchment's left on the seeds to protect them against moisture and temperature fluctuations and is only removed when the coffee is ready for export. In Indonesia, however, the humid air and thick cloud cover over the sun makes drying coffee that's in its parchment more difficult. Removing that layer while the coffee's still wet allows the seeds to dry efficiently. The wet hulling itself is a somewhat traumatic stage and often some of the seeds will be chipped, crushed, or split in the process. You might notice that the finished coffee, which is now green coffee, looks very different from coffees that are processed other ways. After the wet hauling is finished, the seeds have increased exposure to sunlight, heat, and air during the rest of the drying process. Again, this is a way to tackle the humid climate and the cloudy sky. After being wet hauled, the coffee is brought back to a drying area where it's spread with rakes into thin layers. At Bergendal Mill, they dry coffee on tarps on concrete. It's thought that the earthy, savory, and herbaceous flavor that's classic for Indonesian coffees, and particularly those from Sumatra, is due in large part to this processing method, as well as the cultivars that are grown there and the climate in the different growing regions. Once the coffee is dried to 11 to 12% moisture, it will be placed in sacks and stored in a warehouse until it's ready to be shipped. 